Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> every week. Do it every week. Every week. And we, we practice it every week. And we like, okay, it. how are we starting? We'll both have all these ideas, and mm-hmm. then we'll be like, oh, hi. <laughs> In our defense, it's like we get a countdown, and then it just gets quiet. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, oh here we are. <laughs> hello, everybody. So, um, hello. Welcome, Stencil fans. I'm Carrie. I'm Patty. And we are Studio You are not no, Patty. I am not Patty. Not, not today. today. Not last week. Let me check our audio real quick. And... So you're not, we have audio. We have audio. Um, yeah, so hi. Welcome to our Tuesday Live Q&A with Studio R12 Stencils. We are super Q&A. excited. I Q&A. Like that. All right. That means you can ask all the questions. Ask the questions. We are here to answer your questions. We're here to show you some fun things. Yep. So you can do some giveaways. Giveaways. Yeah. So much fun. So we have, let me get us popped up here so I can check and see. Um we do have some housekeeping. We love how we hate housekeeping. We hate what? How many? How many? How many ways do you hate housekeeping? Seven million four hundred sixty-five thousand, and I added to that last night when my vacuum fell on my head, and now I have a goose egg. So luckily, my bangs are covering <laughs> it up. But we do have some fun housekeeping for oh, you guys for here. So. If you want to grab that sign, the big one. Yes. Um, if you missed our YouTube release last week, we have released this beautiful sign. You can um, see the yeah. foil technique is what we show on this. Like how reflective that it's is. It's so, so cool. It's so, so cool. cool. Um, and you can do that through a stencil. It's amazing. It um, really so is. we have that video. And then um, this week, I'll give you a sneak peek of what you're going to see on our YouTube release. So a stack of books. I hope you guys love it. No. If you guys are fans <laughs> of the dollar stores, they have all kinds of really neat surfaces to paint on. So we've been really challenging ourselves to find unusual things. So we found dollar books mm-hmm. that were all the same color and all the same size. Yep. And then Carrie did a little Valentine's Day project for you guys. Is. And it turned out super cute. I'm really excited. And I'm going to show you how this to do gonna it. This is going to be this weekend. And this is texture paste on here to fill in where the print was. Yeah. And it, you can't really see the texture on the camera looking at from Rusty's camera. It's not but, super textury. Um, it's kind of like when you get your ceiling texture just yeah. a little bit. Like a little schmear. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so we're going to release that this Saturday morning. Super cool. So a $3 project. Yeah, basically with super the craft cheap. supplies you have around mm-hmm. and we just use the letter you use the letters I just use letters i used our new lettering tool to Ooh. line it up yeah so you're going to want to watch this saturday mm-hmm. and see how um how to use the lettering tool and mm-hmm. how to use the letters yeah. and how to do that texture absolutely yeah i love Yay, it it's exciting yeah um we also have some really fun stuff that we're working on i've been doing some so um, sample projects patty's gonna can i share that one stencil that i fell in love with walking by yeah this was this is one that so um, this is the fun thing about doing my job is like Carrie will get things printed or she'll be doing something else and you know we approve the stencils as we go through the process but I don't always see everything and so I walked by Carrie's desk and this stopped me in my tracks look at how absolutely adorable Isn't that, cute? that is the cutest summer spring garden sign, any of that stuff. The bee is adorable. The words are perfectly done. I just love this project. I can't wait to use the stencil. Yes, and I am going to share the link right now to um, to it and um, how it looks when you put the honeycombs with it. We have a lot of bee stencils mm-hmm. coming that have the honeycombs on it, which is super cool. Yeah. Um, Janet just commented and said she was going to ask about the lettering tool. She needs more in-depth instructions. Make sure um, we are going to be posting the video that we did that was last week yeah last week's will be next yeah week. so um next week that'll be up on our youtube page and Janet. make sure that if you are wanting to know when things come out that you subscribe and then mm-hmm. ring the bell after you hit the subscribe thing yeah a bell pops up and if you do the bell it'll be like hey these people just did a thing yeah you know so um and then you can ignore it if you want to ignore it it doesn't yep. it's not super irritating absolutely um so we have some giveaways today, Yay. some really exciting giveaways. Make sure that you're liking, commenting, and sharing. We have been um, just pulling people from comments that we get throughout yeah. our live, and then our grand prize. Um, I will show you the grand prize. The grand prize one. is this huge oh my uh, gosh. stencil set. I bet you that's a hundred. I think it's hundred and thirty. Yeah, there's that's twenty a lot. stencils here. There's six by sixes. It's incredible. There's all kinds of backgrounds, everything oh. from stars and. Um, 
folk bricks, things that you can do candy canes with, Cobwebs. animal print, all the things. Yeah. Um, so this will be announced tomorrow around 1 p.m. Eastern. So you have 24 hours to watch, like, share, and comment. And then you could potentially win this. Story. And I have a very important question. Yes. What is your weather like today? Because yeah. we woke up to 20 degrees and yesterday was like 60. Um, um, it was ridiculous. Lisa Becker says it's a beautiful day in Central Texas. So oh, Texas. <laughs> congratulations to you because Lisa, it's freezing here. Lisa, I'm on my way. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, oh my gosh. And then I guess we're going to have a little dip and then we're going to go right back right up back to some up. 60s and have a middle of December warm spell. Yep. Um, it's cold in Illinois. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, we have someone watching from New York. A bunch of people watching from a bunch of different areas today, which is exciting. It's cold in New York, not supposed to get above freezing. Ooh. Um, it's supposed to warm up in Illinois, so they're seeing it too. Um, Janet says that it's overcast and nasty, 60 Thursday and 70 Friday. Janet, where are you that it's 70? We are coming. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, I was freezing my little fingers off last night. I got home from work and the temperature just started like plummeting. I think it was 37 when we left work. Yeah. And all of my lettuce in my garden was uncovered. And so my husband and I are out there go, <gasps> <you> know, <laughs> covering up the little lettuces. It was very... Bad. <laughs> um, Darlia says it's 16 in Wisconsin. More snow oh, is coming Darlia, Friday. Oh, Darlia, sorry. Friday, Friday, <laughs> Friday, yeah, Darlia, Friday. Friday. Um, Elizabeth says in western New York it was 29 this morning. Oh. Um, Annie's with us from Ontario. We have, Yes, we have some. What's it doing in Ontario? What um, can Canadian friends? Myrna says in Arlington, Virginia, yesterday was 16, today's 20. So she... <laughs> She, she I didn't know Arlington way. got that low. Yeah. Wow. wow. Chile in South Carolina, which Chile in South Carolina is like not as chilly as. Yeah, what's chilly? What is chilly? Chile? Yeah. Vicky. Is, that, is that like 55? <laughs> Vicky, tell us what your chili is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, right, one more important question. One more important question. What is in your tumbler today? Yes. Lunchtime for the East Coast. Yes, breakfast. Um, coffee. This one has wine. Mine has water. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, friends. And then this one has tea. And I'm just kind of double fisting it here yeah, today. Yeah, so we've so. just got a little bit of everything. I have a I have a call that I'm doing this afternoon and a, a yoga class that I'm teaching. So I'm I'm being good today. Uh, I'm being good today. Maybe this <laughs> afternoon <laughs> we'll change our mind. Need to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have some people drinking coffee, some people drinking water. So we have um, iced coffee. Iced coffee. I guess, you know, my husband loves to eat ice cream in the winter. Yes. And that's very interesting yeah. to me. I like iced coffee in the winter, yeah. too. I like to warm up with my hot coffee, but I just like the... I don't know what that is. I don't drink coffee, so... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who is excited? We have some neat things that we're going to share today. Um, I'm going to show you, um, as we work our way through, five weird supplies you'd mm -hmm. want to have in your painting kit. Okay? And they're just really odd... But very useful things. So I'm going to show you that and how to do that. And I'm going to start. We're going to show you how to do um, sawdust through with paint and show you a project that we did. It's a YouTube video. But I'm going to show you that technique so that you can kind of get inspired. And then I want to start with this foil project because I did not. Let me move my beverages. Okay. I did not um, varnish this because I tend not to because sometimes I go back over the top and I'll do things to them, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, Steve, you good with this angled so I can show like the smudges? No. Okay, um, and so then what happens is like here, I've got some smudges of things and um, over here as well. And so I wanna show you how to take care of smudges on your unvarnished, unfinished things. And that's the first weird thing to have on your, in your paint supplies. And that is a spray bottle of water. Okay, and that seems like a really weird, random thing. We do carry the bottles here, um, and it's hard to find a good spray bottle, so that's why we brought them in. But if you want to remove smudges on your painted, unvarnished projects, just mist a paper towel, and then you can go on. Let me find a good one for you, Rusty. Right here, if you can see that one. I'm going to wait for Rusty to catch up with me. I go really fast, so sometimes that takes a hot second. So right there, and you just wipe that right away. No muss, no fuss, and it just takes that little smudge right away. So that is how you can kind of like repair some of like the smudges. Ooh, and if you get 
Use lint-free. I would probably for this have the blue paper towels on my paint station. But once that dries, I can wipe that back off. And then look what I did. Rusty, can you see that one? Right there. I scratched it with my my wedding ring. So what you get, I'm gonna do an extra little guy. And then you can go right back on there and just wipe the scratch away. So that's a super easy way to bring your project back up. And honestly, if you were to take your varnish and go right over the top of this, the varnish would erase almost all of that as well. So that's some kind of neat pro tips. Okay, I do absolutely love the foil in these projects. Um, you could do it right through the stencil. I show you all the tricks and you are literally gonna be like, oh my goodness, why did I not know about this before? And it's that's, so beautiful. And that's on YouTube right now. Yep, so I just can, shared the link. Yep, you can go and see that right away. A um, little bit of other housekeeping. Um, we have, normally Carrie would share um, the links, the Amazon links and do a, you do a, like a big list. <laughs> yeah. And Amazon, East Coast Amazon is currently down. Their AWS, which is their web service, um, is down. It took our in-house um, <laughs> operating system down with it. It, it took out McDonald's app. It took down a whole lot of stuff. Um, so they're working on it and doing that thing. But so don't expect the links right now. We'll put yeah. them up later we'll and share, then- We'll share along the way. Yeah. And that'll save you some money not shopping on Amazon for a hot second, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next, let's talk about the next weird thing that you'd wanna have on your um, in your painting supplies. Okay, and this is gonna be like maybe a hippie noodle blower, right? Chalk, okay, why would you need chalk um, on in your painting supplies? I keep wanting to say on your painting table, but most of us would probably put a bag away and have a shelf, you know, or something like that. So let me show you why you might need that. Some people um, have, and I have a chalk I already had out, but I put it away. Some people can paint with a brush and not only just stencil. So um, this might not be for everybody, but sometimes you don't know when you're gonna wanna put a drawing on here. And so if I took my um, coloring page, if I found a little cute butterfly icon and I was doing a garden sign, I might wanna add something that wasn't on a stencil that I had. And so the way that you can do that is you can take your chalk and a piece of tracing paper um, and you can just do a rubbing on the back of your of your um, tracing paper. Blow off the extra dust, and then you can lay it down, chalk side down, and then lay your butterfly over the top of it. And then this is the triple threat um, ghost writer that has that ball point, the ball, um, the pen with the roller ball without any ink. And this would be a perfect use for this because then it's not going to mark up my page. So I can just roll along. The rolling makes it really easy to trace. I don't know if you've ever tried tracing, but um, regular um, non-roller ball um, tracing or writing tools, they get stuck sometimes when you're doing things. So you can just go on there, loosely trace your project, and then lift it up, and then presto changeo, you have a pattern right on your piece. And so that makes it super easy to then take your regular artist brushes and you could fill that in with your color and you can make um, your own artwork, if you will. Do they have any questions about uh, that? Because I feel that's a... Not yet. Let me... Darlia said last night she tried to use crackle medium and sprinkle glitter over the medium. So where the paint crackled, the glitter spark sparkles through, which I think it sounds... All right. Wait, 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 wait. I need more information on this. This sounds like my, my noodle was blown. Yeah, she used crackle medium and sprinkled glitter over it. So okay. where the paint crackled, the glitter came through. <sighs> okay. So Darlia, send us a picture. We cannot wait yes, to see it. I want to see this. This is so cool. Okay, so neat thing about, back to um, this little guy right here, if you take your water, say we didn't want this right here, I could take my water, and because that's chalk, my paper towel, and I can just wipe my chalk away, and so that makes the lines disappear. So chalk is a perfect transfer medium because um, you can easily correct mistakes. And um, the click eraser. So this is kind of a little bit, I've got a little theme going here, I didn't realize it. Um, I've got like kind of correcting your mistakes going yeah. on. The click eraser um, also will erase your chalk lines. And um, if we don't want to be gross and be like saliva <laughs> in a COVID world, 
Um, I can go in there and be like, let's go use water to do that just by dipping the water in there so you can correct that way. The click eraser is also one of the best tools for correcting bleeding under. If you dip it in water while your paint is fresh, you can go right along beside it, correct your bleeds, and then it won't show. But it will not take paint away when your paint is dry. Mm -hmm. So you have about a five minute window. Yeah. And then on the water bottle, the um, water bottle is really interesting. So say, um, Joyce asked if you can use a pencil eraser. You know, you can't. Um, it has to be a PVC eraser. Um, the PVC erasers are soft and they don't have leave like a residue. The, um, the, these kinds of erasers are made out of something different and they're hard generally, even if they're still rubbery. This one I think is an old one. But um, they just leave grit and things behind. And if you've ever erased graphite with it or pencil with it, um, it will leave streaks of whatever you've used it for behind. So the white is the best. And um, this tool has a PVC eraser on the back end of it as well. I tend to forget that it's there. And I love the sound <laughs> of the click eraser. <laughs> so yes, 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 that's me. <laughs> OK, so say I painted a project. And I want to it has no projects that I want to do this with. Um, OK. So we're going to pretend like this is a project. So pretend I just based this or I just um, stenciled it. And I lift it up and I hate the colors. And that's a really good reason for being a peeker. Um, and a peeker means that's when you lift up the stencil to see if you like it. So you're peeking underneath. If you peek at it and you hate it, then you go like this over the top of your project. You use your paper towel and you wipe that paint right away. And then you can let it dry and you can go again with another color and make your correction. So that's a really neat way to have an on the fly, mm -hmm. super fix it. Um, when we teach the classes at Boardroom um, in Gallipolis, that's our boutique and our paint and take and stencil place. Um, it doesn't flow as well as cork and canvas. <laughs> you know, it's like stencil a board, you know. But um, anyway, but it's a really cool place. Anyway, but um, our teachers will walk around with a water bottle right there. Because as people, you know, that are new to it or they're not listening because they're giggling and having fun with people, um, they'll be like, ah, horrified, I made a mistake. And they'll just whip out the water bottle and ch -ch 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 fix it all up. So that is a really good um, thing to have on hand. All right. Time for a team drink. All right. Let's see. Um, Becky said, could the chalk slash tracing paper work in place of graphite paper? Absolutely. And honestly... Um, the um, graphite paper really does mark up your surface quite a bit. And, um, and it is, when you erase it, it can smudge. And so the chalk technique is perfect for that. You can also go on the back. If you could see through, this one is a really heavy cardstock. You could also take your chalk, pretend like it's see-through, and you could just write on the back side where the lines are and do that as well on the back of your just your paper. Actually, you could probably just go ahead and scribble on the back like that. So, and then I want to talk about a very, 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 very strange thing. This is a beautiful, one of our most popular stencils. It has been in the top, I'd say top 10 for maybe like four years. Um, this has not gotten old for people and um, that's a pretty neat thing. Um, it is a little bit raised. Before I do this next thing and show you, I want to go ahead and just, when you have those um, ridges from your stenciling, um, it's always good if you're going to do something on top of it. It's always good to knock it back with a little bit of sanding so it doesn't catch. What I'm going to do next is going to catch. OK. so. This is a very um, non-grungy. This would be great in like a coastal house or, you know, a farmhouse look. But if you wanted it a little bit more grungy, this is a really cool thing. This is a bag of soot, okay? <laughs> Fireplace ash, okay? And I'm going to show you how to distress with that. They call it the Dirty Cowboy. And I love that name. It's just wrong but right. It's just great. <laughs> And so I'm going to show you how to do this. So this is from my fireplace. If you get a coal, 
This is, I feel like Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 naughty list. I got you. Okay, so if you have a piece of soot, it will just draw black on there. Um, so be careful about too much. You might sieve it if you didn't want that look. So I'm going to try to get some just ash. Okay, and this project has been painted probably like two years ago, a year ago, year and a half ago. It was last year. Yeah. Okay, so I can sprinkle that ash on there. And then I can just rub that in. And it's gonna give it, I'm gonna go over to the trash can here. And you know what? I'll bet you that board is waxed. Probably. <laughs> okay, so why do you wax your board? Let's go there for a hot second. You wax your board so it protects it from things going on top of it and marring it or marking it or doing the thing. So it protected it from me doing the dirty cowboy on That's there. That's okay. We have a video on the dirty cowboy. We do. And it's a great video, but I'll show you how you get by with it. If you've waxed your piece and you want to have that go through sanding blocks, this is an Amazon link that you can't shop from currently, but you go through and you sand it. Is this 60? It is. It's not very rough. I don't think this is 60. Um, I think that's 100. Yeah. Um, I think that was the 100 brick. Okay, so we can go through and sand through our wax and grunge it up a little bit. And now let's see what happens when we put our dirty cowboy on top of there. Ooh, black. And black. So it should settle into our sanded areas. And if not, then it's just a really good protection. Okay, yeah. So this is where you can see this kind of like grayed down and it went into the letters really neat right there. See how these are all really bright. So it just gives it this like subtle kind of neat, just distressed and you can do it and then you can um, go ahead and spray varnish on top of it. Um, that way you don't wipe it all back off. Um, and it looks amazing on the right colors and on wax projects. Okay. All right, so for sandpaper, Steve, remind me again, we use the low grit, the yeah, 60 grit. The 60. Is, mm -hmm. So 60 grit is what we use. We had someone ask us, Jana asked what grit sandpaper. So we use a 60 grit sandpaper, which is really coarse and rough. It's really coarse. When we want to make it really distressed. And then we use a 120 grit, which is super fine. And the 120 grit is what we use. And we just want to go over top and kind of do just a really light making sure everything's nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about what we're gonna talk about. Um, I want to show you, this is a YouTube video that we have done last year. One of my favorites. This is one of my very favorites. Um, this was, and I'm gonna butcher her name again because I don't know how to say it. She <laughs> sent us a she pronunciation <laughs> thing and I couldn't even move my mouth around it. <laughs> but um, Gertie, it was, it, G E E R T J I E or some some spelling like that. A lot of letters that we don't use in our our words. And um, anyway, but she's from the Netherlands, and she did this um, and posted a picture using our stencils um, on Facebook. And we love it when you guys share, so please do share using sawdust in your paint to make this really rough texture. And it might be easier to catch it here um, if I turn it to get some of the light things. You getting that, Steve, at all? Yeah, yeah. Rub your nails over there, because you can hear it. That's really coarse. Yeah, really coarse. Anyway, so I'm gonna show you how to do the paint. I'm not gonna show you how to do the rust. I'm not gonna show you how to put the stencils on it today. I want you to go watch this video, because that's why we have 100 and was it 19 videos? Yeah. 119. Yeah, 119 videos that we've uploaded in like a year. Um, so it's a lot of videoing that we're doing and we want to do this for you and uh, But I don't want to <coughs> excuse me I don't want to reinvent the wheel every time I talk about a project So I want to just kind of remind you that this is there for you to learn how to do that technique and in Christmas colors It is phenomenal You uh, you should see it in blue and green. It is it's just really great. Okay, we're gonna use a duster stippler um, this is a just super cheap brush. Um, it is not the same as a dome brush. Um, dome brushes are super stiff and this is kind of floppy. Okay, it's got a looser weave, if you will. This is super tight. This is good for stenciling. This is not good for stenciling. So don't try to stencil with this unless you want to make a mess. 
Um, Lisa asked <clears throat> some examples of colors that the ash would look good on. Yeah, the I'm trying to think, Steve, can you at all, or can we look and see what that Dirty Cowboy project was made? Because that one was. Was it that way? It, it, the, it was. The, the yeah, no, you were my the, sunshine was the one Dirty that we did Cowboy um, was that stencil and that, it was, but it was with a mix of teal and brown. Yeah. Okay. So it was the yeah. exact same. And thing. I, I think honestly, guys, that that is um, because it was waxed, and I did not even think about it being waxed. But it looks amazing. You're gonna, you'll post the link to that. Yes. Okay. And then the sunshine <clears throat> when we did that as well. Yeah, we did that on the you were my sunshine. We I think we showed that last week when we were giggling in here. Yeah. Oh, was it in here? Um, I think it's out outside. Carrie organized. I organized, I cleaned up. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start on this while they're looking for that project. And I'm gonna get out some red just to keep it in the same family. Um, and then we're gonna just use um, sawdust. Okay, so we're just gonna put in about an equal part of sawdust. And I had sawdust, my husband is a woodworker guy and does some stuff um, for us. He has his own little wood shop at our house. And um, he was our he was our woodworker. For those of you who have followed us for a long time, um, he was a woodworker that did all of our surfaces and everything before we bought machines to do it. And um, he's super happy to be retired. So um, anyway, but he brought me in some sawdust, and it was like maybe a little inconsistent consistency. And so I just put it in my blender and just blenders are not just for food. And so I made it into a finer sawdust and I like that texture better. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix that into my paint. I'm using a rimmed surface today to keep everything contained. Maybe I want a little bit more paint. So maybe two to one, two paint to one sawdust. Um, D asked, have you ever tried sanding with sawdust flakes? It comes out like glass. No. Not. I am learning more today than you guys are. I love that. That's a good idea. Let's try it. I want to try it now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'll be back. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> All right, Carrie, you take over. <laughs> okay, so put that away. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to, oh, and then if you do not have a woodworker in your family, um, I found this at either Michael's Hobby Lobby or um, uh, Joanne's. Um, it's spinet. We are memory keepers, and I think they're putting this on tumblers. I think, I think so that's too. what the spinet is. And this is sawdust, and it's super fine, like the stuff that I have. And you can buy it. I got it on fifty percent off. Um, so yeah. Anyway, yeah, so, we'll, so you can just buy that. We'll share that link when Amazon when Amazon gets back up. Yeah, it's amazing how much um, the web does to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna scoop this up. And we're going to just stipple it. And if I need to move the paint around, I can just slide it around. And maybe I want it heavier at my edges. And this brush right here makes the most phenomenal snowman texture um, on like a snow body kind of thing. So um, it is a grand brush, super duper cheap. You probably only need one. Um, it, unless you're going to change colors, it can't be wet to use. Um, same thing like our domes. Okay, so you just move along, and then when you get it covered, make sure that you coat it all the way. You could base coat over the top of this if you needed to, um, but you're just going to be dealing with the texture. If I was to base coat, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, if I was to base coat the top of this, what I would do is I would stipple the top coat as well um, just to get it into all the nooks and crannies. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, Darlia says she takes boards outside and lays them on the gravel driveway and walks on them to make them distressed. I, I what kind of shoes are you wearing? Yeah, isn't that cool? I mean, I bet you I have some shoes that could do that. I bet the one, the loud ones you're wearing today could do it. <laughs> I um, am a heel walker and uh, my dad is amazing, but my dad is also a heel walker. And so I don't know if it runs in the family or if you just get taught as a baby to do that, but I'm like, grr, 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 you know, and I wear sometimes really loud shoes. <laughs> Barb says for fine sanding, she uses a brown paper bag with no print. Yes, uh, brown paper bags make phenomenal sandpaper. Um, it just like if you're on a finished thing and you don't want it to scratch through, brown paper is perfect. Mm -hmm. I love that. 
I love that sometimes I get reminded of things that I know that I forgot that I knew. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead. So Barb, Barb is going to get a three dome brush set um, for that question. And then um, I'm also going to give, I'm behind guys. I am so sorry. I'm going to give Denise Hall, she's late to the party. She just joined us. But she Hi, is going to get a four stencil set of Christmas stencils. There's a bunch of fun different ones. Some nice. snowflakes, a little joy, a little red truck. So wait, wait, will... give me that. Yeah. I just have a little joy. Just a little joy. <laughs> a little joy down in your heart. Put it on your heart. Right. <laughs> okay, so um, you will also want to watch this project because, um, I'll hold up the bigger one because I think it has a better example. And we have all kinds of these like um, shaped surfaces on our website, um, studior12.com. Um, and so you can get anything to paint on. And we use a lot of MDF. And it's that very pressed, glued together board. Mm -hmm. Super hard, super durable. And um, I actually love painting on it. So this area is right here where you see this um, rust is actually we made rust powders out of sand and paint and we did that over a year i bet it's a year and a half um, i know we can probably get the date off of this video yeah it's it was earlier it was earlier in 2021 so it was yeah. right around the time that i so maybe maybe a, a year, so, about somewhere a year, a year anyway but um we used them again for something else recently and they're still good they're still awesome mm -hmm. mix them once you're going to have them forever it was super amazing and cheap to do but you'll want to watch that video to see how to apply it. I think that that is the most, and you can use that whether you've used sawdust or not. And then Barb asked, can you stencil after the sawdust is on or is that done first? Um, that's a good question. So I'll bring this over. You can watch that video and see how to do it. But this is definitely stenciled after. And then um, I also sanded through it to get that distressed um, texture. And so you can see where that's just all scratched up and doing all the things. Okay. We're almost done. We're going to be, I think, a little bit shorter this week. Um, I never, I, I always think we're going to be 20 or 30 minutes, and I, like, every time it's 50 minutes. <laughs> every time. Um, anyway, this is the You Are My Sunshine, and so if you see here on the edge where we just have this kind of, like, really neat grunginess, this was done with the sawdust as well as antiquing. Mm -hmm. So that is, this is one of my favorite projects. I just love it. This does not have not sawdust it was done, it with, was the, done with the, the yeah. that that stuff the ash thank you the ash um janet asked if the mdf warps the mdf will warp if you stand it and um all wood will warp if you stand it um honestly i have more problems with the baltic birch that we use for some of our projects because they're delicate and the mdf if you have a very fine little piece it'll pop and break the Baltic birch is with the plywood, so they put a strand this way, a strand this way, and a strand that way. Um, so it's got like strength, and um, it won't break, but it will bow. Okay. So sometimes. And so I like the Baltic birch for small things. I like the MDF for things that are um, signs, flat on walls. Um, you can make place um, placemats out of them, table runners out of them. Um, all that kind of stuff, but I wouldn't want it for some, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't do a leaner like these guys. Um, I wouldn't do a tall porch sign out of it. That you're going to want a big piece of pine yeah. or um, hardwood or something like that. And um, thicker is better. And Darlia said that she used the joy in the snowflake on her Christmas envelopes this ah, year. Ah, that's a good idea. Cool. Yeah. 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 We idea. made cards, but we didn't mm -hmm. think about doing the envelope. Nope. That's such a, and, and you guys, when you scumble and you swirl, it goes so fast, you know, like you literally can get, um, we do a, um, a um, boardroom in a box for, it's online on boardroom.com, uh, boardroom46.com, mm -hmm. and um, we do it for kids, and um, the little kids make and take them, there's little things of paint, and there's the applicators, and there's stencils, and there's boards, and you can customize it for boy or girl, and age, and all that, and, um, and what we were just talking about, um, the joy, yeah, that you can. Oh, I was going on a tangent someplace. Okay, in a box. I'll right. figure it out. But anyway, but we've got the boardroom in a box, and that's a cool thing as well. But I don't remember why I was talking. We about use it. small stencils for it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I will, know. We'll come back I to it. Um, 
Kathy. And no, that's not from wine. That's only no. half a glass. Maybe it will help if I drink more. Unfortunately, it's not from wine right yet. Um, it's just age. Um, Kathy Humphreys Lowry is our Ooh. next winner, and she is going to get one of our banding stencils, and it's super cool. It has the size of the band along yeah, the side really of it. Yeah, that's really handy. So that you can see they go from one and a half inches all the way down to one sixteenth. And that actually brings me to our very next thing that I want to talk about. Before you talk yep. about it, okay. um, Kathy asks, do you prime the MDF board first? She has trouble painting MDF. Um, is it MDF or is it... Um, Masonite. I think the Masonite is the hard baked. Um, it's a very darker color and MDF is um, very raw feeling. It feels more like wood, but the MDF is um, the Masonite. I think it's Masonite. Uh, yeah, it's very slick. It's um, slick on one side and soft on the other. Uh, yeah, our Masonite that we do, our eighth inch is actually a Masonite kind of product. It's not as dark. It's about the same color, but it is more difficult and so what i would do to do the slicker one is i would take my 120 might be a good grit and i would rough it up with your 120 just to make it stickable so um yes i think that those two things get um unified as one thing but um if you wanted to prime your mdf what you would do is you would use a um just an all-purpose sealer you know something like that so um that would make it easy to do I love these questions. You guys are doing great today. Okay, so when you are using this banding stencil, this is how you can make a bunch of stripes and bands on your piece. And, but unfortunately, I call these things finger traps when they're little. This is like an arm trap um, because they're wobbly and wiggly and you think, though, that's useless. Let me show you a really cool thing. I'll give that back to you. Give that back to me. Thank so you. if you have long bands that you need to secure, I used this stencil for, and this is, oh gosh, guys, if you ever have wanted to see a raging trend, this offset um, frames is off the charts raging right now. It's Etsy everywhere. It's Pinterest everywhere. It's on cards. It's on signs. It's on wedding things. It's on your furniture. Um, this would be fabulous on like dresser drawers. Um, that kind of thing. We have these in like five sizes of each style, and I think we have 21 um, different styles. We have them in oval, we have them in hexagon, we have them in every one of the things, big to small or big to large. And that is what I used on this project. So, but, and we even used it on our Christmas cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the Christmas we cards the teeny, were tiny, tiny, ones. teeny tiny. Yeah. So, the, and you're going to want it in sizes. And you're going to have a favorite. Um, there's a designer that says everybody has like a shape of their heart. Mm -hmm. um, if you look around at your furniture in your house, you, if you have all rounded surfaces, your car has a rounded line, then you probably are a round person. Mm -hmm. um, if everything is square and you like boxy things, then you tend to be square. Yeah. Liking squares. Okay. So, but, so this is also lightning storm. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, but this is also big arm traps and stuff like that. But what I did, and this is the next um, thing to have on your um, painting table, this is the stick and restick. Okay, this is amazing. Um, we did the foil um, live, and that's on YouTube as well. It's on Facebook. Might be harder to dig for, so it might be better just to go to YouTube and look at our lives. Um, and did we make a playlist for that yet? Yes. Okay, so there's a playlist. You can go find all the lives, so you can go back to the technique that we talked about that week. This is a, my favorite out of all the things. I think I tested, I mean, there's five or six of them. But um, this one is the one that I really, really like, and I used it on this. And what is neat about that, I used it where the bands are. I didn't use it across the whole stencil, but like that sticking. <laughs> there's a lot of weight there. But that is sticking. It's sticky on both sides because I had to flip it around still after that long yeah. and that is amazing so you can stick it down nothing will move and then you're not taping and holding and doing all of that stuff and it really doesn't impact when it's next to other stencils it's not that sticky it's like the perfect sticky um deb crawl lloyd is the winner of our next banding Yay. stencil Yay. and she asked can most techniques be used on cards, such as the dirty cowboy? I mean, yeah, I would say so. 
you might get into, um, you want to watch, like scrapbooking would be one that I would be cautious of because of you have to be the, um, what's the thing where you don't have acid in it, um, acid free, I think mm -hmm. is, I, I never scrapbooked, um, I'd made a few pages because right. I had classes, but um, it is, um, I didn't think I was allowed to get into it because I would go off on a tangent of doom and I'd never come back out of it because there's so much cool stuff. So I just said, no, you can't do that. Um, if you're gonna hang this on these curtain clips, which I think is a really good way for these extra large ones, um, and this is a curtain rod back here, and it has these little curtain clips. Um, if you try to hang it this way, look what's gonna happen. If you hang it on its corner, that is perfectly, absolutely not doing anything to that stencil. So that's the perfect way to hang that. Okay. All right. Um, I think I have Karen. One. Karen asked, I love the sawdust technique, but how do you prevent bleeds when stenciling over the rough area? Oh, on the, um, yeah, the sawdust. You, um, what I would do is I would use um, this to stick it down. Um, I think this is a really great sticky um, bleeding preventer. And then you're probably going to have some bleeds. And so you could go in if there are areas, because it's very rough, you could tickle in a little bit of this. Another technique that I really like, um, let me grab this out of here. If I lifted this and it bled everywhere, I would wet it. And I'm not gonna lie, in the days before COVID, I would totally lick that thing. So I've learned better now, not allowed. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, yeah, I know, right? It did the world a favor. <laughs> Just don't use my eraser, okay? It'll be fine. Okay, so but so say this was fresh paint. I could just go right along the edge of that and just lift out any mistakes and it would take care of it. So okay. it's a really, this is valuable. And we just got a bunch of them in. We Yay! Have, we just got restocked. Yeah, and, you guys, we so. have been working so hard and ordering so much extra stuff because of supply chain stuff and everything because we want to keep it in stock for you. So. We appreciate you shopping on our website. Um, we want to be there for you, so we make sure that we're doing the right things for you. I think I have one last, um, one last tool. Okay, I have a couple questions okay. before we get there. Um, Darlia wants to know how do you put hangers on masonite? Ah, so that's such a good question. You don't even know. <laughs> All right, here's we had this conversation last week um, in our boutique where we do the painting workshops. That question gets asked so many times, and we have been open a few years, but we haven't really answered the question like publicly, and it was like, why, why haven't we done that? And so last week we were like, okay, how would we do this? Um, number one, I'm gonna yank lemons. Okay, these are command strips. So command strips stick without any difficulty. We've never had them come caving off the walls. Um, and the way that you do it is you put your command strip on there with the second piece on there and don't pull the, the stuff off, the anti-sticky stuff, you know, the thing that protects the sticky, until you're ready to go on your wall. You come over to your wall and you press it once you know you're straight and you just push on the two spots. It works brilliantly. You would not believe how awesome. Okay, the other thing that you could do is you could go to your... Um, drill press and you could drill holes in the corners. We don't sell these boards usually with holes because um, we don't know if people are going to want holes. Mm -hmm. So if you need to use a drill to drill into MDF, I have done this once. It is the silliest, most dangerous feeling thing that I've done in a long time. If you put your drill bit right there, it'll take your board and start swinging it around and around and around. And um, you don't want to do that. And it also will make the wood really hot. I actually burned myself once. So don't do that. So I'll be your guinea pig. Um, what you would do is you go in with a drill, uh, with a fine drill bit and you do a little pre-hole and that'll drill right on through very easily. And then you go in with your size that you want and you do the next drill hole. So that's how you put, and then you wire it or put a string. Okay, so that's one way, two ways. And then the next way is that you can use E6000. Um, I'm excited about that one project, we that product that we haven't, yeah, that guy. We haven't done this one yet. I haven't even opened it and tried it yet. But this is a um, 
star bond gap filler this is for filling in knots but the woman that i saw doing it on youtube was using it to put the hanging tabs the um, little silver tabs on the back of the wood so i'm excited to try this i just haven't gotten there yet so any kind of adhesive that will stick you can put the sawtooth hanger or you can put those little um they look like pop can hangers um on the backs and if you have any good ideas please share them with yes. us but that's three really good ways and i think that that makes it yeah, and then we talked a, a lot in-house about using little signs, you know, like this size or smaller, and putting them in wreaths for your door. And then in that case, you would just drill a hole and you would wire it. Um, so I hope that answers your questions. Okay, ready for the last one? Yep. Okay. The last one is also in a bottle. And, oh, that's the water. And this is alcohol. And alcohol will clean your brushes. It'll clean things out of your brushes. It will clean things off of your project. Um, if you can't get it off with water, then you wanna use a little rubbing alcohol. So it's a good idea to go ahead and label. Um, these um, big bottles are fine. This is so much handier, okay? And then the other thing that this does is it resists with, with um, the paint. So I can put watery paint on and I can put droplets of alcohol and it'll make these really cool background techniques. I will be doing something with that because I think it's magic. Um, but you, if I wanted to use this and just needed a little bit, I could just go ahead and squirt it on my palette. And that's so much easier than dumping like that. I could take my brush and I could go next to my letters and I could go ahead and peel off some paint that was too stubborn to get off with the click eraser. Click eraser is my first, 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 first favorite. But, um, Last ditch effort, get out the alcohol. And on that note, <laughs> get out the alcohol. Get out the alcohol. Um, on that note, uh, let's do a giveaway. We're going to do one more giveaway. And we have a buffalo plaid stencil. And it Such is a going stencil. to go to Jennifer Marino Wallace. So Congratulations, Jennifer. Congrats. Jennifer. We'll message you and get that stencil sent to you. All right. Any um, last questions? I have a couple. Okay. Um, maybe, 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 um, uh, actually I think we have some, but I think we might go back and, um, answer some dig of into them. them later. You yeah. guys, sometimes that's what we do. Um, we will dig into, so sometimes you ask a question that might be easy enough to answer and mm -hmm. sometimes it'll be like, wait a minute, we need a whole moment here. And so we'll wait and put it into one of these lives and um, answer them that way. Um, straight alcohol? Um, yeah, it's 91%. You could use 70% as well. The 91% is gonna be a little bit stronger to remove. Um, so yeah, just straight straight rubbing alcohol. I lost my lid somewhere. You do wanna keep your lids um, on these things. If you have them in your painting tools and stuff like that, you wanna keep the lids so that it doesn't like schmear. If you, if you crank it and it breaks, it's gonna make a mess. So just be aware. Um, one more question. Mm -hmm. Marissa wants to know, how do you stop balsam from bowing once it's painted? Um, I've, so balsa wood or bal balsam? Balsam. I don't think I've ever painted on balsam unless we're talking like pine or fir. Um, I'm married to a woodworker, but maybe I don't always listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know that balsam is something I've used. Um, I know I've used yellow pine. I know I've used um, hardwoods. I know I've used, um, you know, like I've used a lot of woods. I just don't know that I've done balls. Okay. So sorry. That's okay. We yeah. so we have some questions. We will come back to you guys mm -hmm. um, this afternoon and and tomorrow yeah. and answer your questions. Send you some links that you have asked for yes. and um, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can yeah. see my video. Oh, and you know what? Hey, one last thing. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you subscribe to um, our website. Um, so we sell on Amazon, mm -hmm. we sell on our website, we, um, you know, we do all the things, um, you know, we have an Etsy thing, you know, so there's a lot of ways that you can get at us. Yeah. Um, the website's really the best because if you do the spin the wheel thing and you subscribe, that'll get you subscribed and then you can t opt out if you want, but that'll get you a coupon mm -hmm. um, for our sale price. But it also gets you in our newsletter. In our newsletters, we share tips, we share tricks, we um, put sales on. Um, you're not gonna see those on all the other channels because yeah. it's really difficult um, to do that across the channels. Um, they don't have that 
I can do a sale on Amazon on 50 items at once. Mm -hmm. um, and we have 6,000 titles and, and five sizes of each. So we have a lot of stencils. So we have every title you'd want to see. But um, yeah, the way that you're going to find the deals is to go to the website. Yep. And so, Agreed. yeah. yeah. So right. we'll see you next week. And thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Yeah, see ya.